It is about uh, 7 a.m. here on Friday. Just woke up and uh, had to pee so bad. I was holding it for so long. It is freezing cold. I don't know what the temperature is, but uh, it's freaking cold. So I threw the Melly on and uh, I'm debating if I just want to lay back down for a second or so. But I should get on the trail. I have a big mile day today. Today is uh, 8 to 10 up to Spruce Knob, I think, if I'm, if I'm right. But, um, yeah, so I'm up. I'm moving, sort of. And uh, good morning. Well, I decided to whip up some pour-over coffee while I'm waiting for my watch to charge. For some reason, it didn't charge fully overnight. Uh, so I've got it on a battery bank, just getting juiced up. And my first battery <laughs> that I used on the camera yesterday is already dead, so I'm charging it a little bit as well. I have a spare, but the way this thing burns through batteries shooting video is crazy. So get as much juice as I can before I head out there. Just burnt myself on the coffee pot. <laughs> Grabbed the handle, it was hot. It hurt like heck, so that was awesome. All right, so the journey begins. Let's do this thing. Seneca Creek backcountry. I love these West Virginia signs. Exactly like the ones at Dolly Sods. They're awesome. Trail conditions. It's unsafe to cross Seneca Creek if it's high. No worries here. Still hearing the road traffic. <laughs> there was uh, like trail maintenance guys or rangers or something came through those big old trucks this morning. That's cool. This is beautiful. Oh my goodness. These woods are so dark. I had to take the ND filter back off because uh, couldn't see anything. Dark woods. It's still early though. I'd say there's a little bit of water here. Look at that mud. Now I gotta cross that. I literally keep wanting to stop and film every five minutes because it's so beautiful. If I keep doing that, I'm never going to get to my destination. <laughs> but it's just so pretty here. You're following this rushing creek. You've got the alpine feeling environment. You've got the, the pines all around you. Man, and it's so quiet and peaceful. It is just nice.
just cross this little run here. It's super easy. Definitely glad I brought the trekking poles to get across these water crossings, but uh, so far the trail has been super nice. Just flat right along the creek. It is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, I've seen a few mountain bike trails, uh, paths from mountain bikers here. So I saw some yesterday, some guys on mountain bikes. So uh, that's kind of cool. And uh, yeah, so I'm over halfway to my junction point with uh, where I go meet up at Judy Springs to get on the Huckleberry Trail up to Spruce Knob. So making really good time, which is awesome. Uh, but I, I know that that trail up to the top is going to be much more difficult. It's a st steady, steep incline for four or five miles. So this is gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful. Love it. Well, this looks like my first crossing of Seneca Creek. Doesn't look too bad at all. Water's not too high, so uh, gonna go across this thing. Glad I brought the trekking poles. Definitely glad I brought those. That water's cold. Woohoo! Cold water. Yeah. This definitely reminds me of Dolly Sods right here. Holy crap. Well, now we're getting ready to hop on the Huckleberry Trail, and that's where my journey is going to get really interesting. So that's where I start the ascent up to Spruce Knob, so uh, I anticipate some climbing. Almost heaven? Yeah, I'd say pretty darn close. Holy cow, this is beautiful. This reminds me of Colorado right here. And I believe this is like what the high meadows are like, which I'm going to be passing through a lot tomorrow. Man, this is something else. So I'm getting ready to head back into the tree line. I wanted to get one last shot of this view. May not be as sunny like this the next time I come through. Man, absolutely beautiful. It's rough. I think I figured out what this place reminds me of. It's like a cross between Grayson Highlands and Dolly Sods, kind of like a, a cross section. Well, you are right between Virginia and in West Virginia, so that makes sense. Beautiful, beautiful. This trail is amazing. Can't recommend it enough, and I'm not even at the top yet. Whew. 
Gonna be a long day of hiking ahead of me yet. I got a huge ascent. Just gonna pace myself, that's all I can do. Well, according to Guy, I got about four and a half miles, about 500 feet of elevation gain to go to the top. It's not too bad. Just pacing myself. Super pretty. Can't wait to have lunch on the top. Gonna be fantastic. So I think I'm in that New England feel part that they keep talking about. It's almost all spruce now, evergreen. It's awesome. I came right up on a deer on the middle of the trail. Of course, I didn't have the camera out. I was so mad, but I did get it with my phone. Wasn't afraid of me at all. Nice little campsite right here. Now this one's right on the trail, which I don't prefer, but I could, I could hang way back here, way away from the trail, and then still have a fire in that very nice fire pit. Okay, so this one is a, a maybe. I've marked one other so far. I really want to camp somewhere closer to the top. So I've still got about three and a half miles to uh, find a nice spot. We made it to the top of Spruce Knob. What a hike. Woo. And I was getting really panicked because I was completely low on water. I was really low. And I, was, I didn't know what I was going to do. And I thought maybe there'd be a water fountain or something up here. Some kind of well. Nothing. Met some really nice people who gave me two full liters of water. So those incredible, amazing people gave me two... They topped off my water bottle and then gave me another quart of water, ice cold water. Man, that was awesome. So nice. Well, now I'm going to the top of the tower. So here we go. That is the view that you get as you drive up here to the top of Spruce Top. This is actually better than the observation deck in my opinion. But uh, man, it's beautiful. Kind of wishing I drove up here. Wow, beautiful. There's a little pull off down there, but I don't feel like walking that far down. Now I did see a campsite right as I came up here. It was literally, I don't know, maybe a hundred feet from the parking area. And I believe that is probably the highest campsite you can get here. And so my hope is to try to hop back down there and snag that site. I'm trying to get some kind of a cell signal so I can text my wife and tell her I'm okay. I hate for her to be worrying about me, but whoa, it's windy. <laughs> but uh, there was like, I had like four bars of, of uh, extended uh, 1X or whatever, not even 3G. And then there's somebody said they had like LTE 
up here at Verizon, but I haven't been able to send or receive any messages, so still trying. Well, guys, I'm here at camp, and um, I'm literally, <laughs> I, th I believe this is pretty much the highest campsite you can get up here in Spruce Knob. It's, if you come down the trail um, to the observation tower, it's, it's, right, it's probably 50 feet from where I am. So um, not quite as secluded as, as I might want, but then again, I'm fine with that uh, being up this high. Uh, there is some cell service up here, which is amazing. I was able to get full LTE. I know exact spot where there's a rock that I walked to, and I had full LTE, two bars of LTE. So I was able to talk to the wife a little bit, get some messages home, talk to some people, take care of some things. And I just hung out and I had an amazing view of the mountains while I was off my phone. So it was fantastic. So I'm at this site. Like I said, um, this is a fairly large site. And honestly, I, I was hoping to not take a large site away from a, a big group um, tonight. But the only other ring is up there and it's right on the trail. And there's no wood up there. There's actually a little bit of wood down here, so I can actually do a fire. And um, so I'm, I'm claiming the spot. There, there's so many spots up here. If people get butt hurt about not being able to get this particular one, sorry. <laughs> you know, it's that's life. But uh, I, don't, I don't think it's going to be a problem, honestly. Uh, but yeah, this is this is a really nice spot. I'd love to bring a. a big group of people up here would be awesome got the dolly side style of stone chairs uh, this is the fire pit and of course i'm not sitting in the healing ox chair so forget sitting on rocks but if you have nothing else that's great i'm probably gonna hang somewhere over there there's two trees i think are gonna be perfect to hang the hammock over there it should be far enough to get fire at that point I got a ton of options. Tons. There are so many places I can hang. And here, this is, oh my goodness. I'm debating I might set up the hammock and take a nap. It's 3.30, so I'm not going to eat dinner yet. I've explored everything I wanted to see up top, so a nap sounds pretty darn amazing. I wonder how much foot traffic I'm going to get up and down this trail tonight. There's been a lot of day hikers here today, a lot of people just hiking up. Uh, apparently there's another parking area that intersected with the Huckleberry Trail because I ran into uh, some moms and, and daughters and they were asking me where the top was, where the Spruce Knob was, and I was like, where did you come from? Because I thought there was only one way. So apparently there's multiple places you can uh, park and, and, and hop on the trail. So that's kind of cool, but uh, I have a feeling there'll be quite a few people coming up and down this path uh, the rest of the evening. We'll see. A lot of people come up here and they park at the top and then they backpack down and then they go down to Seneca Creek and backpack along there and camp along the water. That was kind of a tough hike today. It was, it's one of those ascents that it's not that hard but it creeps up on you. Like, you know, after five straight miles of gradually going up, you know, over a thousand feet, uh, it gets to you. And I had already done quite a bit of hiking on the Seneca Trail. So I'm at, I'm over nine miles for the day. And my legs are just like rubber. They, they, I just, I don't want to do anything at this point. So uh, I'm going to force myself to set up the hammock. So that's all done. In case it, it's getting kind of cloudy. That's not supposed to rain, but we're in the mountains, so who knows? Um, very pretty up here. Very pretty. Wow. I'm so glad I brought my sandals this time. I don't know what it is about ultra shoes, but man, after like they get sweaty, you know, you've been wearing them for a while hiking, they stink. I don't know if it's the insoles of mine or what, but my shoes reek. 
I just need a new pair. <laughs> These 3.0s have had it. Might be time to uh, start shopping. I'm glad to be up here though and uh, at a camp. And I actually really like the proximity of this camp because it's uh, close enough to the road and stuff that if, you know, if I need to get up there and use a uh, cell, I can. I'm hoping this wind dies down a little bit tonight so I can um, get this fire and not have the fire blowing, blowing out. There's not much wood. I've got some twigs. Maybe I'll go do some wood collecting. Probably be a good thing to do. Okay, so I've got a little bit of time to kill, so why don't I just do a little bit of a gear overview. You've seen it in my past videos. Um, I actually did a whole loadout video of this trip, but um, here it is. This is my sleep system right here. Uh, Dream Hammock Raven, still with the bug nets. I have the uh, Wilderness Logics under quilt, 20 degree, three quarter, just in case. I don't know how cold it's going to get up here tonight, but I was actually chilly last night in my car down at 3,000 feet. So we're going to see how the temps hold up. I do have a 20 degree Hammock Gear Econ Burrow on my top quilt. This is a Dream Hammock Gear Sling. I use this for my camera. And when I'm done at the end of the night, I just throw the camera in. I can open up these ends and just throw the whole camera and tripod in there. Works out really well. I know exactly where it is. You know, somebody could steal all my stuff, but if they're, if they're going to try to get my camera, they're going to wake me up. Up here, I have the uh, War Bonnet Mountain Fly tarp in the Hammock Gear Mesh Snake Skins. Don't have it deployed yet. Um, I don't know if I'll need it for rain tonight, but I might definitely need it for wind, just to keep, cut the wind down. So I'll probably deploy it regardless. I can't really see much as far as stars go, which kind of stinks. But um, yeah, so that is my that is my loadout. My pack is still the SWD Spirit Wilderness Designs Frameless 40. Love this pack. Love it, love it. Except uh, I had a little bit of shoulder pain today. It was really digging into my shoulders um, right towards the end of the hike. I'm not sure what was going on. I adjusted the straps. I thought I did everything right, but uh, it's kind of a heavy pack. I had extra water in there because those people gave me water. So it's a little bit heavy, but um, still shouldn't dug into my shoulders like that, I don't think. It's kind of weird. We'll research that a little bit tomorrow because I don't want sore, sore shoulders tomorrow. Right now. Excuse me, sir, I'm looking for wood. <laughs> I need a slim pickings. I'm looking for some kind of just, you know, wrist-sized logs or something. <sighs> There's nothing, man. This place is picked over. And, uh, kind of crazy. <laughs> I guess it's a good thing there's not a lot of down limbs, because that makes me feel a little more secure, but I want to have a fire. And then these guys get me every time. These are, these are roots. I, they look like downed limbs, but then when you get closer to them, you realize that they're just roots that are sticking up out of the ground. They're everywhere. It's just how this whole ecosystem is. The sound of that wind is very relaxing. <laughs> it's really nice. I like it a lot. Man, it's only five o'clock and I've already got goosebumps. I'm wondering if I should have brought a puffy up here. All I have is my melanzana and a raincoat I could put on, but uh, I guess we'll see how chilly it gets. On that note, I'm going to start dinner because I'm starving, and once I eat, then, I'm, then I'll start this fire. <laughs> Thank you. 
so tonight's dinner is this good to go Thai curry. I have not had their Thai curry yet, but I've had the Pad Thai, which is the other meal I have. Uh, I, I love these, if you can't tell. I love these good to go meals. Uh, I don't know if they're as good as Packet Gourmet or not, but they're better than Mountain House. Uh, they're made in Maine. Um, they're just, they have not let me down. They're, they're very, very good. So uh, I'm doing a single serving because I'm low on water, limited water. Tomorrow night I can do the double serving pad thai because I'll be by the water. So it's not a big deal. Shake it up a little bit. That's a dirty sock. Okay, I'm using my nasty sock as a pot grabber. Gross. But yeah. Dirty sock slash pot grabber. Now stir. Mm -mm. Oh my. Twenty minutes. Gotta wait twenty minutes for this to finish. Shoo. Now we wait. Twenty minutes. That's a long time. The wind has not died down. It just keeps getting cooler and cooler. Oh man, this is gonna be an interesting night. I may be hitting the bed seven, eight o'clock tonight, which I could easily do, because I'm exhausted. I'm so tired. Oh my gosh. I love this campsite though. This campsite. Yeah, man, this thing's killer. I hope I get a good one like this tomorrow night. Man, that Thai curry smells good. Mmm, holy crap. I do need to find a place to hang my bear back to. There are lots of places to do it. All right, so a moment of truth here for the uh, chai curry. It smells amazing. Holy crap. Um, let's, uh, I put the right amount of water in, but it looks a little watery. Here we go. Mmm. It's good. That's good. Yeah. Mm. Well, pardon me while I eat the crap out of this. It's good. <laughs> oh, man. I killed that. Thai curry. It was so spicy. So good. That might be one of the only, maybe one or, one of two or three freeze-dried meals that I've ever just completely ate the entire pouch. Like, not even like one scrap left. Like, 
I was starving, but still, I've been starving before and still had such bad meals that I didn't finish them and ate, ended up eating a Snickers bar or something instead. So, uh, kudos to Good to Go. You guys make good stuff. I'm not sponsored by them. Not paid to say that. I'm just saying it. <laughs> they rock. Pad ties tomorrow. So, uh, yeah, my stomach's going to be loving me. <laughs> I better find my trowel. Well, it's going on 6 o'clock, and I'm debating if I'm going to start the fire now or wait a little bit longer. Um, I'm thinking I might just go ahead and try to get this thing going. And uh, I've seen a lot of people coming down this path. Uh, one guy had his kids, and they were just day hiking, summoning it. And then a couple other people have walked down with, with big old giant packs. Huge backpacks. I don't know what they're planning on doing, but uh, they're going to have a good time. Well, not hiking, but they'll have a good time at camp. Of course, my chair was right where the wind was blowing. So as soon as I lit the fire, embers started flying towards my chair. So I had to come around the other side. Eh, a little nice little fire going. I don't know how long it's gonna last, man. The, the wood was so, there was hardly any wood at all. I got a few twigs and I got a couple, I don't know, thumb size sticks, maybe a, a couple wrist size. Might last an hour or two, but uh, it's pretty, it's nice. I threw three fire starters in there just to get it super hot. I think it's pretty good. Just gonna enjoy it while, it's, while it lasts.